you, Senator Metz. My pleasure now to call to the lectern uh, Representative Anastasia Williams. Faces on discrimination. Discrimination is not just in housing. Although we are here for the source of income, the legislation for, for years we have been fighting on trying to pass. Because it's a reality. It's an unjust situation that, I, that is happening to many people many families in the state of Rhode Island. And sometimes I want to say what's being done to us is what we are allowing them to do to us. But then again, being part of this wonderful building, the political arena, I know how things sometimes work. I get surprised from time to time. You see me when you need me. Stop housing discrimination. I say stop discrimination in its entirety. <laughs> How many of you have heard of Jane Elliott? Right, I'm glad I'm not by myself. And I ask each and every one of you when you get some free time, because I would not want you to take your time to utilize it for something I'm asking you to do. But one thing I will assure you is that once you look her up and you hear what she has had to say for over 50 years, you will believe what she is saying and has been saying for over 50 years is even worse today. So I ask you, that's my homework to you. And I know some of you, I'm going to look you up and I'm going to come back and say, hmm, did Jane teach you a thing or two? <laughs> because her lesson was real then and more real today. <laughs> So that's why I'm saying to you, discrimination is not only about the source of income. It's just a part of it. A small part of it. Because what good is it to have housing and you can't have employment? What good is it? You have to have both to be able to survive. You need to provide. You want to be a productive person in society, but society will not give you that opportunity. That's right. Is that discrimination or what? Mm -hmm. okay. no. So we're not talking about housing discrimination. We are talking about life and all of its discrimination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today is identified as Advocacy Day. As a woman, 
And as a woman of color, and let me just add this little bit of seasoning to that, a very vocal woman, right. Right. advocacy day is every single day of my life. <laughs> The first thing when I get up every morning and say, thank you, Lord, Father, God, for giving me another day so that I am able to do your work. Because that is one of my purposes in this life. You talk about helping your neighbor if they're in need, if they need clothing, if they need food. Aren't we all each other's keeper? Aren't we all our brothers and sisters' keepers? Or is it just on advocacy day? Or is it just when it's convenient for me to say it? It doesn't take much, but some of us make it a huge task. It's smaller than you can imagine, but the reward is priceless. You know, we talked about this at the United Way. We had a press conference with you guys to source of income for the city of Providence. And I say, oftentimes, my conversation is with the people who know that discrimination is going on on a daily basis. I appreciate your company. I enjoy your company. I welcome your company. But where are the perpetrators? What is being done to get them to the table? How loud are your voices combined together to get them to know? We're not going anywhere. We're not just going to advocate on advocacy day, but every day. Where are they? This room is my supporters, my friends, my family. And I can count on you. I can't count on those perpetrators other than to be oppressing, masters of oppression. They see us when they need us. Urban Green Food Co-op as an example, AKA Urban Greed. Use the community of color to be able to come into the community, and as soon as they get what they want, they disguise. That's exactly what's happening here. The voucher program is for everybody who qualifies and needs one. It doesn't have a color. It has a purpose for the individual or individuals for whom it will benefit. But why are so many people so stuck on making it an issue for their convenience to divide and conquer, to destroy, to disrespect? That's not what we are about. At least that's not how I was raised. No, absolutely not. Diversity, oh my gosh, is so sweet. Could you just imagine if we all looked the same, spoke the same language, dressed the same, lived in the same way? Very boring. How boring that would be. <laughs> Each one of us has something different to offer the other one. Each one of us are a masterpiece, marvelously made by a most powerful individual that I know sustains me every day. Is his teaching not enough for us to be strong enough to do for our least fortunate? We need to stand together and stop this madness. Some days like today, I am so angry, 
Some days like today, I am so tired. Some day like today, I am energized as well. We all just need to let those other folks know that our heads will not be in the sands. They're not going to be stuck with a bag over our heads. We're not going to be stuck in the closet anymore. That we're going to come out and say, when I get up every single day and I pledge an allegiance to a flag, justice for all, I mean it. And I show it. And I speak it. And I'm not afraid to do it. Today, tomorrow, and to my last breath. This isn't about me. I'm good with what I got. This is about all of us. This is certainly about all of us. If you're ready to do it, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's send the message. Let's get the job done. Let us be able to together in one voice say, I was part of stopping discrimination in the state of Rhode Island. So I thank each and every one of you for the strength that you have given to me to continue to share the stories that are real and that are out there. But remember the homework. Jane Elliott, an educator, is still teaching about discrimination and racism that is live and prevalent more today than yesterday. I ask you, please, please, let's keep the course and let this become a reality. <coughs> this year, in this house, for our brothers and sisters in the state of Rhode Island. Thank you.